Hello viewers and welcome to the third episode of Journey to the Throne 2019. I'm your host Kimani Seja. We've already spoken to contestant number one, Miss Alia Martin, representing the community of Campbell. And we've also spoken to contestant number two, Chrislyn Tavernier, representing the community of Grand Bay. Well, here with me today is contestant number three, Miss Annick Williams, and she is representing the community of Goodwill. Welcome to the program, Annick. Hi, Kimani. It's good to have you. Thank you. Right. So you're going to be vying for the title of Miss Dominica 2019. Just being a contestant, how does that make you feel? It makes me feel very great. I feel great to be a contestant at the Miss Dominica pageant. Okay. What makes you unique? You think about yourself, you think about the other contestants. What do you think makes Anik unique? My, personal, my personality, the way I treat people and the way I speak to them. That's okay. Amazing. Okay. So can you tell us a little bit more about your personality? It's very unique. I like talking to people very nice, helping people, ensuring that everyone is okay even if even when I'm on my bad days. And I like putting a smile on everybody's face. All right. So so you're 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 the life of the party then, you know, you're the excitable one, you like to make sure everybody is having a good day. Yes. And how has that been able to help you with your relationship with the other contestants in the pageant? It has helped me in terms of ensuring that all of us has a close relationship, ensuring that all of us get along and they are very happy with the way I'm treating them. Okay, that's great. That's, that's great. So let's talk about Anik. Uh, you represent the community of Goodwill. So tell me a little bit about your upbringing in the community of, of Goodwill. Goodwill is a very quiet village. They don't really come on the road to socialize with people. So they are very happy that I, I, I am going to take part in the Mr. Dominica pageant and they're looking forward to me to put on a show on the night. Okay, that's wonderful. So, so you have siblings? I do. I have three of them. Mm -hmm. I have a baby sister, a brother at high school, and my bigger brother who lives in Carib territory. Okay, so you're number two. And I'm number one. You're number one? Yes. My bigger brother is by my father. Okay. And I'm first by my mom. First by your mom. So yes. you have a responsibility of taking care of your baby sister. sister and my little brother. Okay, that's great. Uh, so you decided to participate in, in the pageant. You decided to vie for the title of Miss Dominica. How did you come to that decision? Throughout my years, I have realized I am not a person who likes to talk in crowd. And I don't have much confidence to, to do that. So I said, if I take part in the Miss Dominica pageant, it will enhance my confidence better. All right, so you're looking to enhance your, your confidence, you know, build your self-confidence. Have you participated in any pageants before? I attended the Goody Primary, where I was able to take part in the Miss Goody Primary. I also took part in Miss Fitness at the West High School, where I emerged Best Talent. And I also took part in the Miss Mayfest 2017, where I emerged Best Dress. Okay, so you've had some some um some experience in terms of of pageantry do you think that you know the the experiences that you've had so far do you think that it has helped you in terms of your preparation for for this big pageant yes it did yes and, and in terms of preparing for these pageants and preparing for the miss dominica pageant how, how different has it been the miss dominica pageant is way more experienced than the other pageants. We have a lot of time to practice for the show. We have a lot of activities, a lot of interviews, whereas the other shows was not really like that. Right, right. So you feel like the Miss Dominica pageant is a total different, different. yes, total it's different ball game. Prepared. Yes. So in terms of your preparation so far, how has that been? It's going good so far and everything is intact. Everything is intact. Yes. So in terms of uh, your preparation for the different rounds, your talent round, your costume, everything is going well. Yes. 
Okay. I can't complain. You can't complain. Um, is there anything um, that would cause you to say right now that, you know, I really should not have signed up for this? Why did I sign up for this? Was there ever a moment that you felt that way? Yes, there were times. But I got, I get over it. I pray to God that I would ignore all the negative comments and just keep my head ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I spoke to contestant number one uh, regarding this. Um, I said to her that um, when I participated in the Miss Dominica pageant in 2001, which was a, a long time ago, we were not exposed, or even the other contestants, you know, in the earlier years in pageantry, we were not exposed to the level of criticism that takes place right now on social media. Uh, people stay on their phones and on their laptops and, and whatever, and, you know, they have the opportunity to give their opinions about you, uh, uh, even when you're, you're trying to improve yourself. Uh, how does that make you feel and how have you been able to deal with that? I took the constructive criticism and make it to improve myself and, and the destructive criticism I avoid it. Mm -hmm. But do you think that uh, when people make negative comments about you though, although it may be destructive, but do you think that there may be certain elements to what people are saying that you just might get something from that? Yes. Even when it's very destructive and negative? Yeah. How so? Also because I see that they, what they're trying to do, they, they're prepping me for something better. So if they give me negative comments, then I can boost up my confidence more and look for the difference. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about your, your platform. Every contestant has a uh, platform that they uh, try to push, that they try to bring awareness to for the Miss Dominica pageant. So, Annie, can you tell us about your platform? My platform is for this journey is Fostering Humanity for Human Services. It's about coming together as a country to help one another. After the passage of Hurricane Mario, I had the chance or the opportunity to become a volunteer at the Dominica Red Cross, where I was able to perform a task as a humanitarian aid. Visiting the communities has shown me that helping people is necessary. Everybody is of need. Everybody is in need, whether or not you're poor or rich. Mm -hmm. Some way or another, you need help. Mm -hmm. And going through the, through the communities has improved and enhanced my mind on humanitarian. Mm -hmm. So this is something that you're really passionate about, that is, that is very dear to you. Uh, what sort of initiatives do you hope to take to help uh, bring out or to shed more light on your platform uh, to help you uh, achieve your goals? After the journey of Miss Dominica, I would like to open a meal program for people who are in need. Mm -hmm. A meal program? A meal program. Yeah. Can you give us a little bit, you know, that song's really interesting. Can you just give us a little sneak peek into what that would look like? I have not really come up with a real plan, but what I was thinking of is to, the, especially the vagrants, they are more highlighted. They are really in need. They don't really have nobody for them. So what I would do every three days in a week or every other Sunday, I will visit them in town to give them food, water, juice. Okay, that's or that's even clothing. Wow, that yes. that that is a very admirable, um, admirable initiative. And I'm sure for a project like that you would be able to, you know, gather the kind of support that you would need to be able to do that, yes. yes? So you're sponsored by the National Health Insurance Scheme. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? The National Health Insurance Pilot Program was established to provide financial assistance for young mothers below the age of 45 and children up to the age of 16. It covers medical expenses for services which are not available in the primary health care level as well as travel up to 80%, while the claimants are responsible for 20%. Mm -hmm. And since the business has been in existent, existent it, it has been very beneficial to people mm -hmm. who are critically in it. Right, so I think that this is a very important uh, uh, scheme to have. So, you know, th this is a great initiative. Um, who do you think or who would you say is the person who is the most influential in your life? My mother. Mm. 
she has always been there for me from from day one she has my back and she's my number one supporter she's a true role model and even when everybody's against my back she's always there to pick up the bits and pieces that's wonderful so so you crown miss dominica 2019 tell tell me you know how would that make you feel and uh if you were successful uh, what, what what would you do with that title if i were to be called miss dominica 2019 i will i will be so I cannot explain it. I'll be shocked because seeing that I have put in all this hard work, I don't know how I feel, honestly. I don't know how to describe it. This, the feeling would be indescribable. Yes. Yes. And uh, if you were to be successful, then you would uh, be rewarded with a scholarship yes. to pursue your education. What would you like to pursue? I would like to pursue business. I would like to have an associate degree in business because my career path is to open a employment agency to provide jobs for people who are unable to get job when they drop out from school. Mm -hmm. So I would like to provide an institution for that. Okay, wow, that you have really you know great aspirations, and I think you know this is this is this is very 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 commendable. Um, so. The journey, as you said before, has been, you know, has been challenging. Um, just tell us a little bit about uh, your your day in terms of, you know, getting ready for for Miss Dominica. I would I would guess that you're a working person. Yes. You know, how how have you been able to balance? Tell us what you do and how have you been able to so far balance, you know, your work, your work, your family life, or your your home life, and and participating or. Uh, getting ready for the pageant. My day starts at five in the morning every day. I'll wake up. I'll wake up and I'll go to the gym for an hour. Come back and get ready to prepare for work at seven thirty. I end work at four. From that, I will take an hour gym again and then go to our, our practices at five to seven. And then after that, I'll have my own personal practices. So it's not much complicated i do have a lot of time for myself mm -hmm. it doesn't really disturb me okay so you've been able to manage time well so that is excellent i think that's wonderful so the pageant is a few weeks away three weeks away yes. right so right now i'm going to give you the opportunity to speak to goodwill speak to dominica speak to your family speak to your friends and invite them to the pageant and let them know, you know, what you hope to offer on that night. To the GIS listeners and the people of Dominica, I urge you to come support me and the four other ladies as we fight for the title of Miss Dominica. It's not only about being beautiful, it's about talent and how you bring out yourself to the world. Thank you. You're welcome, Annika, and thank you so much for joining me on this episode. And there you have it, Dominica, contestant number three, Miss Annick Williams, representing the community of Goodwill. Thank you so much for joining us on this third episode of Journey to the Throne. Join us next time as we speak with contestant number four. I'll be your host, Kimani Seja. Thank you so much for watching, and see you next time. <laughs>